Mina, Konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here, coming at you with 1 Kings chapter 2, starting at verse 5. Now, this is going to be the end of Joab, the son of Zariah's story. Had a very, very shady background. Um, did a lot of good. He was the general under King David for pretty much King David's entire reign. So, long standing, high ranking officer. And he done messed up in a few ways, which I'm going to cover here. Now, what's going on in 1 Kings chapter 2, David is pretty much on his deathbed. The kingdom's been passed on to Solomon, and now King David is la leaving a few lasting instructions for Solomon to abide by. And the instructions essentially are, follow the Lord, kill this guy, have mercy on this guy, and kill this guy. It's very, very fascinating stuff, and... Just as soon as I say this, some of y'all will be like, man, that's messed up. What in the world? Well, let me just cover one of those stories, and you might think differently. You might think twice about it after I mention it to you. You may not. Let's dig into it. Again, it's 1 Kings chapter 2, verse 5. Moreover, David speaking to Solomon, Moreover, you know also what Joab the son of Zariah did to me, and what he did to the two commanders of the armies of Israel to Abner the son of Ner, and Amasa the son of Jether, whom he killed. And he shed the blood of war in peacetime. Very important to note there, he killed these men not in a battle, not when they were officially opposing each other. They, there was no battle. This wasn't a battlefield. He did it, like, like David just said, he, they, he did it in peacetime. So it was effectively murder. And the first one I actually covered in a previous video, and the Lord did not... The Lord didn't kill, nor did David kill Joab at that time. I believe David was an incredibly merciful man, and I believe he exercised mercy as much and as often as possible, and I think his entire life shows that he was, even though he was this amazing warrior and could easily kill people, at the same time he tried to demonstrate mercy, he tried to demonstrate um, you know, being able to hold back and he's not just going to take the life of anyone and everyone who's done something wrong or someone who's offended him. He tried to forgive as much as he could. But he, here he saw it. So he forgave the first one um, when he killed Abner. He, and he killed Abner, if you'll go back in, I forget, it's somewhere in 2 Samuel. I honestly forget where. It's somewhere early, near the beginning. Maybe I can find it quickly without taking too, too much time out of this. I can. It's Second Samuel chapter two. Abner killed one of Joab's brothers, whose name was Asahel, because they were in the middle of a battle. They were actually fighting. It was a war type scenario. Asahel pursued Abner. Abner killed him. Then, during peacetime, Joab essentially Abner was getting, was helping out David, getting the kingdom established under David's hand. And then Joab pulled Abner to the side and killed him without, let, he didn't let David know what he was doing. He kept it secret, he kept it hidden. David ended up finding out and he didn't kill Joab at that time. Well, a few chapters before this, near the end of 2 Samuel, David was, abs was about to replace Joab with a man named Amasa. And once again, Joab killed him. This time he wasn't avenging anyone, he was simply, um, he was simply protecting his position. And even though it's not mentioned here in 1 Kings chapter 2, we can't forget that Joab also sided with, um, what was I, I forgot the name, the guy's name that quickly, Adonijah. He sided with Adonijah, was going to be, I guess, his general, or somewhere in his army once he took over, but it was David's plan for Solomon to be king, not Adonijah. So that essentially was betrayal right there, and he wasn't killed for that. But at this time, his advice to Solomon is kill the man. So, and he shed the blood of war in peacetime. We're back to verse 5, midway through. And he shed the blood of war in peacetime and put the blood of war on his belt that was around his waist and on his sandals that were on his feet. Therefore, do according to your wisdom and do not let his gray hair go down to the grave in peace. As much as, as, much as David wanted to show mercy and as much as he did show mercy, when his time in this world was about up and his son Solomon was assuming the throne, he was like, you know what? Time for mercy is up. And while that that might sound mean, that might sound harsh, and you might even criticize David as 
you know, at this point he messed up. He, at the end of his life, he made some mistakes. I personally don't believe that. He may have forgiven Job that one time. Then there were two incidents afterwards where he essentially, he one, he killed he killed Amasa. He he killed a man in peacetime, and that is murder. That is against the Ten Commandments. And he went against what King David wanted to do, even though David, from what I can read in the text, David did not know about that second murder. At some point, apparently, he found out. But he did not know that Job had killed Amasa at the time when it happened. So at some point, he found out and was like, I'll leave this up to my son to take care of. There comes a point when mercy runs out and there comes a point where judgment has to be enacted. I don't think David or Solomon missed that. When you read later on in 1 Kings chapter 2, and Solomon does indeed what his father David said. He puts Joab to death. And I don't think it was a mistake. I believe there, Mercy is wonderful. Mercy is good. And I am so thankful, as I said in yesterday's message, I'm so thankful for mercy. Mercy is a wonderful thing. But there does come a point, even before the Lord, where the time of mercy runs out. So don't push him. By him, I mean the Lord. Don't push him and see how far you can go. Rather, use the mercy you've already been given. Use that to the very best of your ability. Use the time that the Lord has given you to the utmost. Don't presume on the mercy of the Lord. That puts you in a very, very dangerous position indeed. And I think we're all guilty of that to some extent. I know I have been and I have repented of that. Let's all be thankful for the mercy of the Lord and let's walk in his mercy while his mercy is still on us and let's not let's not give him a reason to move from mercy to judgment let's keep walking in that mercy and being immediately repentant when we do fall in sin guys thank you very much for watching this i love you god bless